Hey friends, and welcome back to the channel. I'm Tim Corpus, composer and sound designer. And today we're gonna to take a look at something that I was asked uh, quite a while ago, which was about pairing FL Studio with Touch OSC. So let's take a look. Now we haven't taken a look at pairing with FL Studio before, so this is something new with Touch OSC. Uh, and that has to do with a few different things. The uh, OSC ability with FL Studio is limited, if not possible at all. So we're not gonna really use OSC messages in this. Uh, we're really just gonna be working with MIDI. Uh, but that's important because there's actually something really cool, a nice trick that we're gonna use uh, to control a lot of the transport. So first, if you haven't seen some of my previous videos about pairing uh, a mobile device, I'm using an iPad uh, with your computer, take a look at one of those older videos that talks about pairing a system with Touch OSC. I get quite a few messages pretty often about people having issues connecting uh, MIDI messages with their devices. So check out my previous video, which had to do with MIDI errors, and hopefully that can help you. Of course, you can also check out the Discord server and the Facebook group because there's a lot of folks in the community that'll help answer your questions as well. But for right now, let's dig into FL Studio and take a look at how we can pair these two together. So we're back in Touch OSC as per usual, and I'm going to set up the server on my desktop, and then on my uh, iPad, it will be connecting. We'll just go here and connect, and you can see we're in with a blank screen. And the first thing we're gonna do, let's add two faders, two different faders, uh, make them a little bit bigger. I'm just gonna copy and paste this. And we're gonna keep one red and we're gonna turn one yellow. Yellow's perfect. And then let's add two different radials. And you'll see why we're doing all this in a little bit. But first I wanna get this together before we jump into FL Studio. So we'll go ahead and duplicate this, move it over, and I'm gonna make this yellow as well. Now this is gonna be able to control our volume and our panning. That's what we're gonna do. This is a really simple setup first. So let's jump into FL Studio now. So here we are, FL Studio. Uh, this probably would seem familiar for anybody who's used it before. Uh, it's not my favorite DAW, but I get why folks use it and there's some interesting stuff on it. So really all you have to do is head over to your options and then to your MIDI settings or F10. And a lot of these things were already set up for me. I did have to, you know, uh, turn some things on, you know, this enable button here. Uh, I am not using the bridge. The Touch OSC bridge is for MIDI over Wi-Fi. And I am currently connected because my iPad has no battery. But if you're using Touch OSC or any other MIDI devices with other DAWs, uh, those should show up. If this is your first time, you can add them here. Just make sure to enable them. So you'll select here and then you can enable. You can see that this is disabled because I'm not currently using the bridge. And the controller type, if you were to select this, there's a ton of different uh, controllers from different manufacturers. We're just gonna use the generic controller. That's all we need for this. And I'm gonna keep this on port one because that's all we need for right now, program channel one. Um, but if you have that already occupied by, let's say your MIDI keyboard or something else, you could always change that. But for right now, we'll keep this here. So that's it in settings. We're all set, we're all good to go. That's all we needed. And so this is a mixer for FL Studio. It's pretty cool, we have some uh, controls here, things that we can move around. Uh, and this is gonna be fun. This is what we're gonna play around with. So what I wanna do is take these two channels and link them. But first we're gonna need to add messages to Touch OSC. So back in Touch OSC, what we're gonna do is uh, take our first little uh, fader here. We're gonna go to the plus on messages and we're gonna add a missy, me a missy message. Nope, not a missy message, a MIDI message. All right, so if we open this box up, we can see it's enabled. We are currently setting on uh, channel one and the uh, CC that we're sending is an index. So let's check this out real quick. Let's view the log. This is something that I've seen some folks be confused about. So what it is with index is that if I move this message, you can see we're going channel one. 
right? And that's the data that's coming through. This is everything that was being sent through numbers all the way up to 127 down to zero uh, with this, uh, this fader. Now let's take this, this radial here, we're gonna add another MIDI message. And you can see by index, this is two. So now if I move this, you can see data is two. So the way the index works is that it's just going to numerically order any object you put in. So the first object would be zero, the next one, two, three, you know, and so on and so forth. So if you really didn't care about what your MIDI CC are set to or the program channels, you can use index. I like to use a constant just because it's better for me to just know what I'm setting up. But if you're in a hurry, which we are right now, we can just use the index. All right, so this is number two. Let's go ahead and take our yellow fader here. We will add a MIDI message. And then let's take this one and we'll add another MIDI message. And then down here, I'm gonna clear this, check this out. So this is our red one. All right, then we have that one. This one actually moved to number one. For some reason, it's not in order. I don't know, don't really care. Oh, it's because we copied and pasted. That's why. Uh, and then this is three. So that's where it is. We have zero, one, two, three. And that's just because of the order that we created. Cool, so we have some MIDI messages on here. Let's go into FL Studio and pair this up. So like we saw before, we already have things set up in here. And all we have to do is right click our track one here, go to link to controller. And here we go. This is a volume control, right? You could set these parameters here if you were doing this manually. But what we're going to do is we're just going to move that red fader and we're paired up. And you can see here on touch OSC, the data is coming through. And then on FL Studio, you can see we're moving up and down. And you can also see up here, this little hint panel is showing us volume, what percent, what dB it's at, and also if it is receiving any message, any signal. That's super helpful. So let's set up our pan over here. We're gonna right click this link, and then we're gonna move our red knob. We see that's going. And then you guessed it. We'll right click this uh, fader link to controller, set that up with yellow. We're gonna do link to controller again, and now we have that panning. And honestly, I love how simple this is to set up. It really reminds me of Ableton, uh, which makes things pretty easy to do the MIDI linking. So, good job, FL Studio. Now this is pretty straightforward. You could build a mixer if you want inside your Touch OSC template. Uh, one thing I would do if I was you would be have a pager where I would have all of my channels that I'm controlling, you know, perhaps all of your mixer in there with your panning, and then another page in your pager, uh, maybe to control different shortcuts or plugins. So let's play around with a plugin. All right, so we're going to take this track one here and we're just going to hit F8. There we go. And you can see all these different plugins we could drop in. So let's find one. How about... Let's do this one, Toxic Biohazard. So I'm gonna click this and drag this over here. Uh, and it already put in a little area for us. So actually let's, let's add some notes in here just to make sure we have things to hear. You know, it doesn't really matter, but I just wanna be able to hear that when we play it back. But here we have our uh, plugin. And what I wanna do is control the cutoff. That seems cool. That seems like something we should do. So let's add that to Touch OSC. What we're gonna do is let's add an encoder. Right click, add here. I'm gonna put this up here and make this like a cyan. And we're gonna go ahead and add another MIDI message, plus sign over here. We're keeping it in the index and it'll add that. So now back in FL Studio, really all we have to do once again is we're gonna right click on the cutoff, link to controller, we're gonna move this and you can see it's all being controlled. Let's just uh, hit play, see what happens here.
pretty cool stuff. So you could link that with any uh, object in Touch OSC so that you can control your different plugins. And this is a great way to do that. You could also, let's say you're using different instruments that require expression or you know a variety of different faders. You could throw those in here and impact that. You could build an entire pager that is uh, a complete controller for an oscillator or a synthesizer. And there you go. You don't have to have you know any manual controllers, any physical analog things that you're touching, playing with. Uh, you could have it all right here on your iPad or mobile device, and it's ready to go. But one of the things you can't do with MIDI Learn, which is different than a lot of the more advanced DAWs, is control the transport. Now, if you've seen my previous videos with Ableton, what we had to do was use uh, some Max for Live things for PlayState. But uh, here, uh, let's take a look at can we play with the transport. So let's close this out here. This is our transport, right? Stop, play, record, all those things. You cannot right click these, or you can, but it's not gonna give us anything to impact. Uh, so we're not able to do any MIDI learn here uh, to set this up. So we're gonna have to do this a pretty different way. So now comes the fun where we're gonna take a look at something that I haven't actually gotten to show you before in a video. Uh, it just hasn't come up. So what we're talking about right now is MIDI machine control. MMC, SysX. Now with this, these are messages, MIDI messages that are built in. They're universal by manufacturers to control, you know, your pretty standard functions. Play, stop, record, things like that. So we can use a system exchange message to control the transport here in FL Studio, and we don't have to deal with any MIDI learn. So we're gonna go into Touch OSC and figure out how we can set up this message. So let's close out the log here because we don't need this for right now. And what we're gonna add is a button that can show playing. So let's right click here, we're gonna add a button. Let's make this nice and big. And this is gonna be our button to tell us if we're playing or not. So I'm going to turn this green. And the cool thing with what we're gonna send is this is gonna be a toggle. So we're gonna press it, it'll play, we're gonna press it again and it'll stop. So let's turn this into a toggle press. And then here's where it gets fun. Let's go ahead and plus, add a MIDI message. And we've looked at some of these before, but in type, there's quite a few different options. So what we're gonna choose is system exclusive. And now we're gonna be able to send a special message. Now you notice here it says F0 to F7. That's because these messages have to start with F0 and end with F7 and that's just part of the protocol. There's a great place where you can learn a lot more about this. In fact, it's on Wikipedia. So here on Wikipedia, you can see the SysX messages. There is a whole format for how this is working, which we're about to talk about, but it shows a variety of different messages uh, and things that you can take a look at and ponder in your own time. But what we're gonna build is a play button. So we're gonna have an MMC message that's gonna start with F0, just like here, and it's gonna close with F7, and we're gonna use the parameter right here, number two, for play. So to set that up, we're going to click in here in the uh, message area. We're gonna type, I'm gonna put my caps lock on because that's easier, and now we put F0 because that's how we're starting it. Then we're gonna do 7F, which helps with our universal command here or universal receiver. Now we're gonna put 01 because that is the device that we're sending to. I'm just using 01, space, next is 06, and then we're going to add our command. So the parameter that we were talking about was play, and that is 02, and then we'll close this out with F7. So that's it, that's all we need for this. And then when we push this button, it'll play, and when we push this button again, it will stop. And while we're at it, let's go ahead and build the other functions that we can use here. So that includes a record button. Right click here, let's add a button, and we're gonna make this a circle. So it's not a rectangle, it's a circle because, I don't know, for some reason in everything that we have, the kind of universal symbol for record is a red circle. So with this, we are going to take this and make it a toggle press. We're going to add another MIDI message, just like we did before. Control change down to system exclusive, and then we're gonna type in the new one. And this parameter 
is 0, 06. So the message that we have to put in is F0, 7F, and then 0, 01, because that is the device that we're using, 0, 06. And now our parameter, which is 0, 06, and then we're closing that with F7. So once we hit this, it'll start recording. And then once we hit this again, it'll go ahead and stop. So because the messages, the MIDI messages that we set up in Touch OSC are a universal function, they should work in FL Studio without us having to set anything up in FL Studio. So let's go ahead and take a look. So let's just go ahead and try this out. Here we have our music, uh, and this has our toxic biohazard um, synth in there. So let's just go ahead and hit our green play button. And we can see that that's working. All we did was push that button and play is working perfectly fine. Now let's hit this button again and make it stop. And just like that, it stops nice and easy. And all we had to do was use this system exclusive message. Let's try our record button here. So I'm going to tap that and you can see it did turn on record. So it doesn't start record. It basically just arms our system. So if I was uh, to hit this play button now, you could see that it's uh, continuing on and it would be recording if you had an instrument in there. So we'll go ahead and disarm. You see it went back to the beginning and then we can hit stop. So this is great. We didn't have to set up anything in FL Studio. We can just use these system exclusive messages and everything works out. So now let's take a look at how we can move the cursor forward and backwards with exclusive messages. Cool, so to add a rewind and a fast forward, let's go ahead and right click over here and we're gonna add a button. Make this uh, nice and large here. And we're gonna do uh, kind of an arrow. So let's change this from a triangle or a rectangle to a triangle. And we're gonna have this faced west, which is that away. And I don't know, let's go with like a, should we go with some purple, purplish? And you know what? I don't want the background. Let's turn off the background. Let's change this to edges so it's all the way around. And uh, yeah, that looks pretty cool. And then actually let's take this. Let's add a MIDI message, which is going to be once again, system exclusive. Let's take this copy and paste move this over here and we're going to turn this to east so so that away maybe i'll make this a little bit brighter so we know that direction cool so to rewind what we're going to do our message in here uh, and again all of this is online we're just going to start with f0 7f we're sending to device one and then 06 and then to rewind, what we have to do, it's parameter 05, and then we close it out with F7. And now to fast forward, it's really simple. It's about the same thing. F0, 7F, we're sending to 01, like I said before. And now this parameter is 04, and then we close it out. And that's all there is to it. All right, so now we have our buttons ready to go. I'm just gonna have us here uh, measure 12, and I'm going to push this button here. And you notice that it jumps two measures. And the reason that is happening is because it's sending a message on press and release. So we need to fix that here in Touch OSC. So let's go back to Touch OSC. So if we select our button here, Let's go down to this message, and here we have the trigger. It's currently on any, but we want it to be just on one, either rise or fall. So I'm gonna set it to fall. Same with this one, go from any to fall. And now let's go back in to FL Studio. All right, so now I'm going to hit this button, and you can see I'm moving just one at a time. 
So these system exclusive messages are super helpful because you didn't have to do any MIDI learn. Everything is kind of just a universal function. So feel free to try uh, more of them. You saw that website, uh, the webpage in Wikipedia that has a list of a lot of information that you could use to set up a variety of different system exclusive messages. So I hope this helps. I know this is a question that has been asked for quite a while about pairing with FL Studio, and it's pretty cool. I think uh, FL Studio can do a lot of different stuff. And as always, thanks for tuning in. I appreciate you watching this tutorial. Be sure to like the video if you learned something, and you can comment below and subscribe to the channel. Lots more to cover here, and I'll see you next time.